One year has gone by, and to many it's as if absolutely nothing has changed in Ferguson, Missouri. Bullets are flying in the dark of night, stores are being looted, armed militias are roaming the streets with rifles, and a nation that was told their first African-American president would bring everyone together sees the folly and fraud in that statement. If we're honest, then maybe we need to admit America is not better off now than it was eight years ago, or even one year ago. We're a nation suffering a Grand Canyon-esque split over race, some will claim. And whomever is in the White House come January 2017 will be charged with fixing it. Then again, is it fixable in our lifetime? It's a pleasure to have in studio dedicated civil rights activist and executive director of the Tea Party.net, Niger Ennis. Always a pleasure to see you, my friend. Thanks Good for stopping with by. You. Always. With everything that has happened in Ferguson, let's begin there. Mm -hmm. Because there were so many people who felt one year anniversary, it's going to happen again. It doesn't make a difference. Nothing has changed. But has anything really changed? How much blame do we put on the government? law enforcement and the community themselves well i think you have to look at things from multiple perspectives from the perspective of the real people of ferguson as you know alveda king and i went down there and we met with democratic uh, legislators republican legislators the chief of police uh, the mayor a variety of different folk met with store owners with church leaders and those folk are in good shape in fact the black community is probably more civically engaged today than they were a year ago which i think is very very important and that's a good thing you have a new police uh, not police chief but a uh, police official uh, one of the leaders there that is african-american i think there's an increased presence of african-americans in the force and plus the whole philosophy of making police into tax collectors with guns you know i think that philosophy is dead in the city of ferguson then you have to look at the other perspective which is the george soros funded anarchists like black lives matter campaign and other such anarchists and socialists why types. do we never hear that they're funded by soros you you're one of the few people who will say that out loud because they've been intimidating you know, I mean, the whole Democratic Party, you know, the Democratic Party has the donkey, some call it the jackass, that represents their party. <laughs> they need to replace the donkey with Al Sharpton. Because they have become the party of Al Sharpton, dominated by Sharptonism, you know, and, and so much so that O'Malley, Governor O'Malley out of Maryland, who says a self-evident point, which is black lives matter, white lives matter, all lives matter, He's intimidated by these anarchists into saying, oh, no, 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 I'm sorry, I'm a racist for even suggesting that white lives matter too. There's something deeply, deeply wrong. There is a cancer in the country generally, and in particular in the Democratic Party, that is a, a cancer for the rest of the nation. But the United States itself, blacks and whites, we've never been better off. But wait a minute, you're just saying they've never been better off. That's not what we are told. That's not what people, that's not what people on both sides of the fence will say. And even the president will indicate that uh, we are still massively apart. So where's the disconnect? Why can you get away with saying that? What do you have to back that up? What I have to back it up is that Barack Obama got more white votes than John Kerry did. Okay, what I have to back that up is that in spite of all the disadvantages he had in running for re-election in 2012, he got re-elected with a majority of the population. But what does that say about the black population, though, who still feels as if that in that Grand Canyon rift, everybody else is here and they're way over here? I'm glad you bring that up because there's a difference between perception and illusion and reality. There was a Gallup poll taken with all this Black Lives Matter stuff. It said, you know, do you believe that there are too many police in your community? not enough in your community or just enough in your community when you combine those blacks that said that we the number of police in our community is just fine or we want more police in our community you know what that number is 89 percent in this gallup poll less than 10 percent say there are too many cops in our community that's in spite of black lives matter that's in spite of barack obama and his racial incendiary language that's in spite of the former attorney general eric holder and the games that they play i got about a minute left on black lives matter there was the bernie sanders incident now we're hearing that that is not the black lives matter movement some are saying it's a group called outside agitators 206 <laughs> and it is not black lives matter who wants to do it within the realm of law do you fall for that no I don't fall for it the, the fact is they have different types of anarchists some anarchists want to create chaos and confusion within the law others do not 
and but they're all a part of the same package and they do not represent the interests or the community of Ferguson or black community generally. 30 seconds. President gets in January 2017. What did they do to make sure that we bring that gap closer together? Tell the truth. What we need is, is that a, possible. <laughs> that's a good question. What we need is a president that doesn't care about political correctness. He is not intimidated by little thugs like the Black Lives Matter campaign has intimidated O'Malley and Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton. He's got to be willing to stand up to the American people and say these are the facts of life. If I did no better, I'd swear you just talked about Donald Trump. <laughs> no comment. No comment. Did I say that? No, you did not. I want to be fair. But you're talking about somebody who will stand up and tell the truth. And there's not a lot of people who will stand up and tell the there's truth. There's a reason he's number one in virtually every poll. All right. And we're going to see if he becomes the president and stays up there. Always a pleasure, my friend. Good Stop to see by you. anytime. Let's talk My to pleasure. You. Stay with us. This is the fastest 60 minutes of news. The hard line continues.